I think as much European military cooperation and defense cooperation in particular is very desirable. Um, I do believe realistically, though, that um, this all needs, that we strongly depend on the United States, or actually depend strong on the United States than ever before. Hopefully, um, Europe get its act together, but this will be a longer term game. And for the time being, the transatlantic alliance and the NATO alliance is absolutely pivotal for our security. And um, I think that's the trend for the next couple of years. At one point in time, um, we were also thinking last year that um, the Chinese-Taiwan conflict might actually erupt and that China is though also looking at what happens to the Ukraine conflict. So what's your, what do you think will happen to that conflict and is the war in the Ukraine having an influence on it? Yeah, I, I believe that China has no interest in a prolonged war in, in the Ukraine. Um, it limits GDP growth. Um, it is bad for inflation. We see high energy prices disruption of supply chain. So everything that is true for the European economy, say it's also uh, true for the Chinese economy. And Xi Jinping's central promise is to is growth and prosperity for its people. So I don't think that there's an interest in, the, in China that this war continues. That's probably also why they put their peace proposal or a peace proposal on the table. Let's see what comes out of that. But on Taiwan, I would argue that um, the status quo hasn't really changed. The rhetoric has been beefed up, but uh, and Xi Jinping has reiterated that he wants to reincorporate Taiwan into the mainland. That's the same rhetoric since 79. The U.S. has also beefed up the rhetoric with Biden saying that it will come to the defense. And Taiwan is absolutely critical for the key supply chain, i.e. chip manufacturing with TSMC in Taiwan. So this is a very high stake. But on the other hand, um, do we look at a short-term or near-term um, potential um, uh, conflict around Taiwan? I believe near-term the likelihood has decreased because uh, China sees the Western unity, is very impressed by the Western unity in my view, and I don't think that there's a, uh, in the next couple of years we're going to see an attack on Taiwan if there's no declaration of independence or, um, uh, or another um, uh, external, uh, external measure. Um, I do believe that long term um, the ch we can't escape that question, and um, if there is a potential conflict, that that have, will have repercussions that are far more grave than what we're currently seeing in the Ukraine. Yeah, but earlier in our interview, you were saying that you think that, that you're going to see a Chinese-Russian block building, yeah. Um, yeah, as a matter of of, uh, of fact in the coming years. So, um, what does this mean for like the world as such? Is it some sort of deglobalization as well? I think deglobalization or reglobalization is the right word. We, we are leaving the age of, geopo of globalization, free markets, um, and uh, free trading. Um, we are entering into a period where um, we're seeing um, a multipolar world order uh, with very determ strong determination, nationalistic um, agendas in the main capitals of the world. Uh, China, Russia, um, the U.S. is uh, also pursuing a very uh, strong uh, economic policy, uh, industry policy. The EU is currently reacting to this. So companies need to prepare for dealing with governments much more strategically, uh, much more being prepared to, to basically live in a very politically driven age. So I think every CEO is very well advised when he's taking a deeper look at uh, political undercurrents and structures that are going to emerge in the next couple of years. Would you say it's not sens sensible right now to expand investment into China as a German corporate? I would not necessarily think that is the right strategy. Um, current investments are rather divested from China. Or we're currently seeing a rather divestment from China. I think that is a, a good strategy in terms of diversification. I believe the Chinese market will remain very critical and very important. And I don't think there's going to be decoupling on all fronts. I think there's going to be decoupling when it comes to technology and national security related matters. That's, that's pretty sure. You can see that activity particularly driven by the United States. But I think there won't be an overall decoupling from China, which won't be healthy, particularly not for this country, yeah. uh, where we're so dependent on exports and, um, and, and uh, free trade.